My TIG welder is out of commission right now, but I really need to do some TIG welding. I have a MIG welder. Is there any way to make it happen? Uh, I mean, pretty much every textbook you're ever gonna read is gonna tell you that gas tanks and arc welding, your TIG, needs to be done constant current. But you said you got a MIG welder. Yeah, and you are, you are the bad scientist. Are you curious? I'm very curious. All right, so we got a MIG welder over here, and I think that if we try some things, we might be able to make it work. We give it a shot? Let's do it. Uh, let's see what happens. I got my trusty, dusty Millermatic 252 here. This is a MIG welder, true and true. I just mm -hmm. pop the wire in, set my wire feed speed and voltage, and I'm good to go. How exactly do you expect to make this thing TIG weld? Well, you listen here, young sunshine grasshopper. I'm gonna show you how this thing can become a TIG welder with just a few little modifications we're gonna do here. Let's change some things around. You were doing some uh, gas metal arc welding. You had the 7525 on there, right? Correct. But your TIG welder's down, which means you got a bottle of argon. So we're gonna switch over your bottle. We're gonna swap on to 100% argon because we're still gonna need that for our TIG welding. So here we are, we switched over to our argon. We got our regulator all set up. And we're gonna come down here in the side of the machine. Now you are running a CV process, direct current electrode positive. So that means that the red wire here was going to the feeder housing and the black circle here was going out to your, uh, your work clamp, your ground, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we got the wire out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and swap these out. We can't do aluminum with this little trick. What we can do carbon and stainless. All right. What we're gonna do is switch over to direct current electrode negative, which is how we do most of our TIG welding on those ferrous alloys, right? Other than our aluminum. So we swap this over. I now have my work lead ground clamp. It's gonna be on my positive. My gun is actually gonna be hooked up to my negative side, which is exactly how you would set this up if you were running some self-shielded flux core, right? Mm -hmm. Your self-shielded flux core is gonna be the same setup. We're really not changing that much here. Okay. Let's throw these down, tighten this up. And we got one little trick up our sleeve we got to do to make this work. Tighten those in place. Let's move up to the other side. Here we are on the business end. This was your MIG gun, right? Correct. Squeeze the trigger, the wire feeds out, comes through the liner, spits out the end, we're MIG welding. We got one last trick. We've got to swap out our contact tip for the special contact tip. I actually drilled this out for a 332 tungsten to slide right inside of it. We pop that in there. And now we have a TIG welder. Right. Let's give it a shot, let's see what happens. How the heck are we gonna set our voltage for this? First, we gotta get our gas turned on. Okay. We got our gas flowing. We're gonna turn our machine on, hit the on switch. Now, how would you normally TIG weld? I would set my amperage. You'd set your amperage. Mm -hmm. We don't have that option. That is correct. We got a wire feed and a voltage. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and set our voltage. Let's, uh, let's start around like, I don't know, 23.5 volts, and, and we're gonna see what happens, right? Because you know, we're trying new things, we're being curious. You'll notice this move a little bit as we get welding. Okay. We'll adjust as we go. All right. We gotta check our flow rate. Yeah, yeah, we got flow, so we're good there. Now, obviously we're running a, a three quarter inch nozzle on this one, so that would be a number 12 cup okay. uh, for TIG. So we got our number 12 cup here. Watch out, Fury. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. I have no high frequency, so I'm back to running a lift arc type arc. Okay, it won't initiate until you until you actually make contact. Okay, so scratch. Okay, so it's going to be more like a lift arc. So you can either roll, roll down, pull the trigger, touch and come in. Or if you're familiar with doing some pipe work, like a lot of times you just light off, right? And so you could actually do that here as well. You okay. know, make your connection off your filler, get to weld. But until you pull the trigger, nothing. We got no arcs. All right. Your choice, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a choice. We'll see what happens. All right, this is real awkward. I'm really excited. You're gonna get in position just like you would be TIG welding. You just happen to have a MIG gun instead of your TIG torch. What? Do my dry run. Good practice. Thanks. All right, eyeballs. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're a little spicy. <laughs> well. That'll shoot. That'll shoot. We'll just pay the extra guy a little extra. It'll be fine. Yeah. So 23 might have been a little high. Let's try like 19.5. Let me let me drop this down a little bit. Oh, oh, that's still pretty spicy. Uh oh. Hey, you uh, you stuck your filler. Sick. That's my thing, man. 
Hi, Miles. Oh, yeah, you're doing pretty good. Thanks. Come on, walk that nozzle. I'm a freaking guy. All right. Hey, we are freaking welding with it. You're welding with a mid gun. Without any wire. With mono wire. I thought this wasn't supposed to work. I thought so too. Didn't they tell you you couldn't do this? They did. This isn't what the textbook said. No, but that's on there. Think about this with like a cold wire feeder on top of it. I really thought you were lying when you said we could do this. You learn something new every day, but I kind of want to see somebody like, maybe like walk the nozzle on this. Like they would walk in the cup. Do you know anybody that's like really good at walking the cup on TIG? We got Dr. Wells. It is Dr. Well. Yeah, they give me this old dog. I'm not the uh, uh, man, here you go. Let's see what you got. Want some gloves? Yeah, I need all this stuff. <laughs> Let's get some PP on the Mr. Doctor here. Mr. Doctor. <laughs> oh, let's see what you got. Got a little bit of a hard start there. Yep. She's a little hot when you get her rolling, but. Hey, 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 hey. What you doing there, Doc? Burning up piece of carbon steel. <laughs> faster! I'm trying to Higher, faster! It's so heavy. Now you can purge it. <laughs> little post flow. Little post flow. Yeah, leave that thing cooks the. Hey man, that's cooking. You could do that on some uh, some thick material, but that's a pretty good looking log you put down there. Down to like two volts. Mm hmm. We had some thick plates, thick pipe. We could probably lay something in there. Let's see a uh, anything like stainless laying around. I think I got some stainless. Hold on a second. Give this a go. Okay. okay. <laughs> that looks good. Golly, it just digs. If you need penetration, this has it. This sucker will eat. I haven't fully figured out the application here, but it gets know. penetration, doesn't it? Yeah, if you're in a pinch, you go, you gonna make something happen. But it, I mean, hey, that looks pretty good. Digging right there, besides. Well, the, I mean, it's kind of really heavy in your hand. You're not really used to the way it balances. Well, I just it's my stick out. If I could pull my stick out out, but I think you got that tungsten pinched in there pretty good. Well, we could probably hammer on it a little bit and regrind it. It'll be all right. Hammer on it. All right, let's get that other side and see if I can't make a a clean. Well, I want the voltages down to 14. Do you want a cleaner? Do you want to recess back a little more? Yeah. You don't need clean tungsten to weld the TIG. <laughs> Not when you're using a gun. All right. Here we go. All right, let's see what you got. <laughs> it's almost like the machine doesn't like it. Let's bump you up just a little bit. I'll give you like 14.5. You know what I think it really needs? All the way. You want all of it? All of it. Let's send it. All of it. Let's see what happens when we go to 29.5 volts. If you want to avoid the warranty on your machines, this is 29.5 like volts. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, that's a good transfer Maybe method. You need more filler. Maybe just a hair. Let's try some vertical up. Uh, you are eating quarter inch blade. Or the... And now we, found out we can art gouge. We can do cutting. You can use it. Gouge. Did you know that tungsten cutting is actually a process? Yeah, I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I thought he was supposed to be the professional welder. You did say he was Dr. Welds. Yeah. I think he's Dr. Cutter. Think... Look at this thing gouged right through that plate. Pretty impressive though. The backside. You... It was okay. It's like a scalpel. Uh, maybe, crack. maybe for a thick plate. Let's let's stick to the thick plate. Yeah. Probably not razor blades on this one. No, definitely can't pass the razor blade challenge on this. But you can TIG weld with a MIG weld. with a MIG welder. Well, Adam, you proved me wrong. That's for sure. Is this something that you necessarily want to do? I don't know. I don't know. There might be an application. Maybe this isn't the right application. Maybe we haven't even found the right application, but the key is we should remain curious. Don't just take the textbook answer that says, well, it's gotta be this way, 
or the old guy in the shop that says you can only do it like that because we can prove them wrong. Maybe one of the new alloys they're gonna come out with or some new process we've gotta join is gonna require you to have a really hot CV TIG weld. All right, John. try stuff. Stay curious. Stay curious, my friends. Thank <laughs> you.